Today, friends, we're gonna build a DIY lithium battery. We're gonna take something that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this, something that actually resembles a real battery. So let's just jump straight into it. First things first, no matter what DIY cell you're using, whether it's brand new, whether it's used, you're gonna wanna check the voltages on every cell just to make sure they're okay, especially if they're used. Next, you're gonna wanna top balance them. Whether you're using an active balancer or not, this is always a good idea to get your cells in a similar range. It's just gonna help your pack performance overall. And if you're not using an active balancer, this step is gonna be crucial for you. And this is something you'll wanna do sporadically just to make sure that your cells are all within a acceptable range. It's simple enough to do this. You just need to parallel every single cell positive to positive, negative to negative, and let them float for a while. In this case, I'd let it float for about 24 hours, and then you recheck the voltages and see how close they are to each other. If you have a bad one, call it from the batch and move on with your project. For this project, I decided to make my own bus bars because they're not widely available for these spin cells. You're gonna need a few things if you do this. You're gonna need some kind of bandsaw, a benchtop grinder or sander, a hammer and a punch. You're gonna need a drill and drill bits, a file, and most importantly, I think you're gonna want a vise. A vise is very useful in holding these pieces when you're manipulating them and getting them just right and making sure that you got the holes drilled out Advice is gonna be very, very useful for you in this endeavor if you are making your own bus bars. If you're not, you can go ahead and skip this step and it won't be a big deal to you at all. When you go to measure for bus bars, it's not too bad to do. It's nice to have the pack loosely assembled so that you can see what kind of width and length you're going to need. In this case, they have nice holders that stand up on their own. I just use some simple tape to wrap around and I kind of got a basic width and length. Once I've done that, I gotta figure out how to get the holes correct. I just went old school. I colored the top of the bolts, put a piece of paper on there. Once that piece of paper transferred the bolt hole location to the paper, I just simply took the punch and transferred it from the paper to the metal itself. You can basically push down with your hand, get an indention, and then go back over it with a hammer to really solidify that punch hole. That being said, these are not gonna be pinpoint accurate. So in this case, you might need to go a little bit wider than whatever bolt you're using, just to make sure that you have a little bit of wiggle room. And if you're not perfectly square on your cuts, on your aluminum, you're gonna need that wiggle room. So trust me when I say that you're gonna to wanna to give yourself a little bit of extra space when doing this step. Let's talk about configuration. This is always the step that trips up people that are new to DIY lithium and don't really understand how the process works. So you're gonna see things like 4S, 2P configuration, 2P, 4S configuration. The differences in that is parallel is how many banks in series you're running in parallel. So that's the P part. The series part is how many cells you have in series to make a particular voltage. Meaning if you have four three volt cells in series, that is going to give you 12 volts. Now, if you have two banks of that, that is gonna give you a 4S 2P configuration. When you're seriesing the cells, you do not gain amp hours. If you have four eight amp hour cells that are three volts each and you series them, up to 12 volts, you still have eight amp hours. Now, if you have the same exact battery, you parallel them to another bank, that will give you your 16 amp hours. And that's kind of a broad overview of how this works. My particular configuration is technically a 4S, 4P configuration because each one of these holders carries two cells in it, positive, then negative, positive, negative, so on and so forth. So don't let this part trip you up. Just know that the P in the configuration is how many blocks 
of sales you have paralleled and the series is how many of these cells in particular did you have to series up to get your final voltage all right the pack is assembled and as you can see these bus bars are far from perfect if you're doing it diy it's going to be hard to get really nice looking bus bars unless you have access to the tools that allow you to make this i've still got to put in my compression right here and obviously i'll have to put it in a case which you'll see later in this video if you don't like imperfect bus bars these are not going to be seen so this does not matter to me but if you want perfect bus bars bus bars like this plenty of people make them and in my opinion they're very affordable for what you're getting you're getting high quality milled bus bars that are very exact, specific. You're getting all the hardware usually. I recommend Project DB. These are some of the only bus bars that I have bought online, so I can't speak to everyone, but I'm very happy with these, and I think they were well worth the money. In this instance, I've got a little bit of space here that's gonna be closed up once I get some compression on it. I've got some electrical tape and some plastic as cheap insurance, so a little bit of plexiglass. And of course this gap is a little bit thicker so i'm going to need a little bit more plexi to make it right positive on this side and r negative on this side i've got a quarter 20 thread in each one of these for positive power lead a negative power lead i'll probably just use a single one aught cable that'll be you know about this long to the terminals on top so the bottom bus bars turn out a little bit better they're a lot more even although you can see they are still a little crooked I've got a separator in between these. All right, let's see where we're resting. So we're resting right at 14 volts. Let me go ahead and assemble the rest of this battery and then we'll charge it up and you know, we'll kind of show off the whole thing once it's done. And now I can hook up the active balancer. Very simple to hook this up. All you need to do is the first black wire will be your first negative. So your main negative here and then you'll simply follow it to the first positive, the second positive, third positive, and the fourth positive. Since this is a 4S battery, this is the correct balancer for it. You, on the other hand, might have a different setup, so you might need a different active balancer. Everything's hooked up. Got the first negative, first positive, following all the way down to all four. It's time to plug in the balancer and see if it's working. And you can see by the light that it is working. We are active balancing. As far as the case, I decided to go ahead and go cheap. I picked up a NOCO battery box. This one in particular is for a Group 27 battery. The height fit the spin cells great. For compression, I use quarter 20 thread bolts with wing nuts and Loctite, as well as purple foam insulation board to get the fit just right inside of the case, which was just a little bit too big. And for the positive and negative connection, I decided to recycle some old side post terminals that I had. We use zinc bolts all the way through the top connected to the power wire going directly into the positive and negative terminal. That way I have four spots to hook up power and ground. Here it is, the finished product. Now, is this a perfect battery? Absolutely not. Is it, on the other hand, a serviceable battery that you could use in many setups? I think so. We could absolutely improve things by getting, you know, some really nice milled out custom made bus bars. We could do a nice acrylic case. We could do many things, but for a budget build, something that's gonna live its life on my test bench I think this will absolutely do. And for a lot of you, a build like this would absolutely work perfect. A simple $12 battery box case, some foam board insulation, a piece of aluminum that is cut into bus bars. You can top it off with just a simple bolt. I happen to have some bolt down terminals, so I figured why not use these? They'll make it a little easier to hook up several leads. So that's it, that's my build. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you have any specific questions that you want to know about this build, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I am by no means an expert at lithium. I am learning this, teaching myself, getting online, finding whatever information I can about each specific cell. Like always, I'm here 
learning with you guys and I hope a video like this helps you out in your DIY lithium venture. If you guys have suggestions on how to improve this, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. And you know, maybe we'll add some new additions, spruce this up a bit, make it a little bit better. With all that being said, I hope to catch every single one of you in the next video. And uh, make sure you leave a comment. I wanna know what you think about this. I want to see your builds. If you have built your own DIY lithium bank, send me a picture and maybe it'll pop up in one of my next lithium build videos because I'm gonna do a lot more builds. So be on the lookout for that. I appreciate you all and I'll catch you on the next video. All my Patreon supporters are the greatest, but the $6 or more members get a special shout out. That is 2001 Monolithic, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, El Fuego Audio, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, Boxboy, Audio Sound Solutions, Jesus Tires, Dennis Carmel Jr., Scott Dilbeck, D. Stewart, David Koslick, Scott McCord, Matthew Tolberg, Debo Bass, Cornut, Trucker 9000, Bobby Burkett, Kevin Lautner, James Childers, Baba, and Thomas Marshall. For as little as $2 a month, you can get access to an exclusive Patreon-only stream, as well as a bunch of behind-the-scenes footage, all kinds of fun stuff. If any of this interests you, please check me out at patreon.com slash high-five-vega. All right, fellas, I'm not even gonna try to front. I absolutely put this entire battery together, strapped it in, realized I didn't add my active balancers. So we're gonna tear it all apart and I will connect the leads and we will run an active balancer on this.